Alright, yeah, and welcome back to some more magic jewels with our Is It Prowess Instant Sorcery Tribal deck? Something like that? Yeah, it's got a big long name. What can I say? Anyway, um, before I get into the games, just want to make a quick note that I changed the Galvanic Bombardments into Shocks as well. The, um, the decision to cut a single bombardment from the deck uh, was very last minute and if you don't have all four bombardments in you might as well have a different burn spell in for the most part so uh, it was just something that I forgot to change over so that is officially changed and the deck list and stuff like that is updated to reflect such things so anyway without further ado let's get into the games I'll see you there all right we're in we're on the draw we have a one land hand it's not exactly the most ideal color either so we'll throw it back and three lander. Ooh, this one's iffy. I think we'll go with it just off of the take inventory as a cantrip shock that we can play in response. And the two fevered visions can do a lot of work for us as well. So it completely depends on what we're up against though, because these could be bad cards. If he plays a one drop here, we're in trouble. Because you don't really want to play fevered visions against White Weenie. And he just goes to pass. Okay. I wonder what he could be holding up. Well, we're going to go Wandering Fumeral and we're going to pass the turn back. See what he wants to do. So we can actually go Island into Sulphur Falls and we can have untapped lands all the way up to the Fever Divisions. Does look like it's White Weenie. That's a uh, graphic bug. There we go. Alright. Well, we don't want to cast the Fevered Visions anymore. Do want to get rid of this guy though, so we are probably going to shock it. So I'm just going to Wandering Fumeral as a tap land since we're about to pay the other one onto this anyway. We'll hold on just to see if he puts an aura onto it. But the beginning of combat will destroy it. Just in case he goes to exert. Because the lifelink is annoying. Well, there's Conviction, so holding off was in our best interests. Conviction can be bounced off of creatures as well, so... This is the best way to get into the graveyard right now, since we don't have enchantment removal. Titan strength, not entirely ideal. Let's take inventory, let's cantrip that away. I don't want to use these fevered visions, because he's quite clearly an aggressive deck of some sort, so... Let's play Sulphur Falls and pass. We don't exactly have the best hand though, so I'm not sure what our odds of winning this are. Kind of relying on these being in a good matchup, and they're just simply not in this case. Plus, of course, six lands out of our 20. Never good. Gideon of the Trials is annoying can be dealt with in the right circumstance. It's going to make sure that our fumarole that we can't animate can't do combat damage. Fair enough. Mercurial Geists. If that survives, it's good. So we'll see. That can kill Gideon with our Titan Strength. It's just got to live through the turn and also not play into something like a Blessed Alliance. So if he leaves his two mana open, it's probably for that. And we've got to bear that in mind. Ticks up on the Geists. Prevent the damage that can be dealt there. Ketra's Monument. So if you cast a spell, you get a 1-1 one, one creature. And white spells cost one less. Take inventory to draw two cards. See, the more he plays things out, the less I think these are actually bad, but it's just such a risk to take. If I cast these and he starts playing loads of one drops, we're in trouble, because he might just be getting greedy and wanting to set up the, the monument. Who knows, plus the cheaper now as well, so he's got a better chance of getting things in. Right, let's take him to draw two cards. I think we've got a bit of desync here. Going to AI. God dang it. 
Draw two cards. Arise from the tides. You know what? That's not too bad. We're going to go all out since it's the AI now. I'm just going to feed visions. Start drawing a ton of cards. Maybe we can get Rise from the Tides. Huge. Storm Chaser Mage is what I want to see because he can't possibly prevent damage that's done to all of them. Goes to his second main. Makes the emblem with Gideon. So we can get a bit of damage in. Smuggler's Copter. If he has a two drop, he doesn't. Okay. Um, so we're going to Titan Strength on the Geists. He's only got one mana open, so we'll point the damage at him, because we're going to kill Gideon this turn. More lands flooding out. He is just not even funny right now. Okay, so if we play Storm Chaser Mage, then we can play Fevered Visions plus the Titan Strength. Not bad. That works for me. Alright, play another mountain. Let's get a prowess trigger with fevered visions. And where's this best placed? We can hit for six with the Storm Chaser Mage. Or we can hit for seven with the Geist, so. We're gonna have to put it on the Mage, I think. Rush of Adrenaline is pretty sweet, we'll take that. Six goes at Gideon, four goes at our opponent. And then we're gonna draw two cards, including that Rush of Adrenaline. Getting very close to Rise from the Tides as well, being pretty sweet. Our opponent's going to be taking burn damage from the Fever Visions, almost certainly. He's only going to be able to really make ground blockers, other than, of course, the Smuggler's Copter, which I'm sure we could probably find a way around. So, what's his play here? Selfless Spirit. Mm, that ain't great at all. So he can crew up his cop to sack the spirit, make it indestructible and trade off with our geists, essentially. But it looks like he's doing his weird AI thing. Oh, Ketra. Oh, Ketra. Oh, dear. She's problematic. Right, take two, take two. Another rush of adrenaline. Gives us trample on both of our creatures, so we might just have the win right here. So, let's go with rush of adrenaline on you. Pump him up. Give you Trample as well. Push through that damage. Expedite on you. Draw a card. Get another plus three plus oh, plus another plus one plus one. And we miss on the next instant, but that is more than enough to kill our opponent right now. Plus, of course, the Fevered Visions to deal another four, which is very likely to occur. Nice game. Alright, let's go on to another game. See you there. Okay, we're in. We've got two mana, both colours, and a few three drops, including an insult later down the line. Take infantry to cantrip and a rush of adrenaline to pump as well. I think this is a decent enough hand. Fever Visions is iffy. Entirely dependent on the matchup and black. Gives me hope that it's good. There's an Evolving Wilds. 
We'll crack that, actually. We don't really want to go much higher above three mana, so thinning out a deck right now seems to be in my best interest. Let's go grab ourselves a blue sauce. Question is, how do we want to proceed next turn? Because we can mountain and uh, take inventory, or we can wandering fumarole and set up the drake next turn. Well, now we've got an untapped land, so this just makes it a whole lot easier. We are going to take inventory because the mountain actually leads us into either one of our three drops. And a Titan Strength. Okay. Maybe Fevered Visions. Just to make take advantage of the early game hand size of our opponent. This is like mono black zombies. They might be stuck on colours. If they're stuck on colours, then it's bad for us, but if they're not, then Fever Visions is going to be able to do a fair bit. I think we should slam it, to be honest. If we get an untapped source, we can Enigma Drake, Expedite, swing through. Fever Visions is going to keep our hand full, plus get us a backup creature down the line, which is something that we're likely going to need if he's got hardcaster removal like Murder. Another Fevered Visions is interesting. Okay, I'm pretty sure he's just mono black. Plays a Crit Breaker, gets a zombie. Thing in the ice would be pretty sweet at some point. Plague Belcher coming down. Sticking counters on a zombie token would be my guess. So now he's got a 5-4 with Menace. We're in trouble. And it dies and we lose a life as well. Swings for 2. Down to 17. Draws a card. Loses 2 life. I just don't think Fevered Visions is a good play anymore. Okay, well, we've got four mana should we choose to use it. So that could be Mountain into Enigma Drake plus Expedite. But then that's not swinging for much either. Fevered Visions draws us extra cards, makes us discard to hand size, which makes Enigma Drake a little bit bigger as well. Or does it actually? Because we want to make our land drop. I'm just not sure what we do here, to be honest. I think it might just be Fumarol plus Fevered Visions and just try to set up our hand for something much better. We've kind of lost to this board state as it stands anyway, so... We need answers quick and Fevered Visions is going to get us there. So it takes us up to seven. There's Thing in the Ice. Thing in the Ice is a way out of this. And we discard to hand size. Let's put Insult in the graveyard. So at least it's Injury on the other side, which we can use. He's blue-black, actually. Mm. Oath of Liliana with no effect. That probably is him setting up for... The Liliana Planeswalker. Discards a land to make a zombie. Hits us for a ton. And then draws up to three, draws up to four, takes two. Right, what can we do here? We can thing in the ice, double take two counters off of thing in the ice, one of those things being shock to take the Colossus off the board. We've got a blocker there, we take 5, 6, 7, 8. Dead. Hmm. We've also got injury to kill, shock to kill. Take 5, 6, 7, 8. Hmm. 
there's no way of flipping thing in the ice this turn. We don't have the mana to do it. We don't really have the blockers either. Because we could thing in the ice plus Drake, and then we've got no mana open. Take eight. Yep, pretty sure we're just dead. Well, let's play Thing in the Ice, because we can expedite, maybe find something off the top, which I'm not thinking of. Cantrip. I was thinking maybe we tighten strength, but... It just seems wasteful. Alright, Shock Colossus. Take one, down to seven. Yeah, that's just it. Let's find out if we had anything else on top. We were one counter away from bouncing all of this madness, which could have been enough. But was not meant to be. Telling time. Rise from the tides. None of those would have helped us. Your opponent just had the beautiful curve right there never to kill thing in the ice so even if we had the blockers plus the removal we were still dead and yeah, that's lethal all right not much we could do there let's go on to another game see you there Alrighty then, we're in and we're on the draw. We have both colours of mana available, lots of two drops to cast while we wait for more lands. Sure, let's go with it. Bit of removal as well, should we need it. So what's our opponent playing? This is the question. They are playing magic. They're also playing green, white. Okay. We hit our land drops because of course we do. That is the way that we roll on this channel. Flood or riot. Okay, let's grab ourselves a red source. Pass the turn. Next turn, thing in the ice. Hope it sits around long enough for us to cast all of our instants and sorceries and flip it over to Awoken Horror. Should do a lot. Deathcap Cultivator. Okay. Graphical glitch. Oh, he's got to sort that one out. All right, let's go with an island. Let's play our thing in the ice. Pass it over. So we can take two counters off thing in the ice next turn, which isn't bad. Potentially three if we went for a slip through space into an expedite or any other one mana red spell. Tireless Tracker. I don't think we need to try and flip thing in the ice anytime soon anyway, so let's just go mountain and telling time. Try to find our fourth land for the Geists. We find an Enigma Drake and a Take Inventory. Well, let's take the land. And we've got plenty of Geists, so I don't think we need the Drake. We'll take the Take Inventory over that. And let's shock the tireless tracker while we still can. So if he cracks a clue, then he's going to get an extra counter on him. Should be less than ideal. Cycles a cast out. Thinks he's not going to need that. It is quite useful against us though to get rid of our creatures, but maybe he's got something else. Anointed procession. Ooh. Now we're talking. Take inventory so we can flip thing in the ice. Which is pretty sweet. Hit for 10 with the Titan strength. Could also Titan strength first so that we know what we're taking inventory into. 
Yeah, let's do that. Titan Strength, give it plus three, plus one. Insult. Insult, eh? So if Thing in the Ice sticks around, which I don't feel like he's going to, Eager hits for 14, essentially. We can give it slip through space to give it unblockable. Let's try take that path. Take inventory, draw the insult, flip thing in the ice, bouncing the death cap cultivator. And we hit for 10. No reason to cast a slip through space right now. It doesn't exactly pump the horror. That's half your life total off in one turn. Presenting lethal for next turn. Cracks the clue. That is a risky line of play. And a tap land. So no blessed lines to worry about. Could have a fog. But I'm assuming by the fact that he scooped, he does not. So we are going to go Insult, Woken Horror deals double damage. There's no flash, co no flash creatures in that color, but just in case, let's make the Awoken Horror unblockable as well, so he's hitting for 14. Can't be blocked by flash creatures, can't think of a single one mana thing other than Fog that he could have, and he doesn't. Sweet. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today's episode, so if you did enjoy the content, then be sure to leave a like, it helps me out a great deal, lets me know you're enjoying the series still. As I mentioned in the previous episode, as long as the support and the viewership sticks around for Magic Jewels, so will the video, so uh, be sure to like and subscribe for that kind of thing to make sure that it stays around for a little while longer. If you did enjoy and you want to see more as well, don't forget to hit that little bell icon as well right next to the subscription button and that will give you notifications when I release new videos. I do hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.